So in this segment, we're going to talk about um, some of the um, patterns that are available um, through MIPS and MARS, the IDE, that's going to make modularization um, easier and, 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 in fact, functional. So for right now, for this component, let's just talk about system calls. Um, System calls are a means of interacting with an operating system. So if you want to actually have the user input information from the keyboard, or if you want to write information out to the console um, through MARS and MIPS, MIPS doesn't have inherent capabilities um, already established within the language itself for reading in keyboard strokes. So you're actually interacting and interfacing with the operating system and having that operating system read the keystrokes into a buffer somewhere, store that information. And so there are a few calls that will help us gather that information that's been typed in maybe, and then store it into a place in memory. So these are called sys call functions. And the basic idea of a syscall function um, is that you will load one particular register up with a value. And that value, um, whether it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever that integer value is, it's going to sit inside a v0, and that is the function call. So the function call itself is a number. And then once you put that number in there, and then the instruction is a syscall, it will go ahead and perform that function. So let's take a look at that function. Notice that there's also another line um, that actually deals with other uh, register values. So there may be things we want to control in that interfacing with the operating system. It may be the number of characters read. Um, right? So in order to do that, we, we would have to set up um, registers, um, other registers beyond V0. So let's take an example. Let's see what this looks like. Um, if we wish, for example, to have a, or send out a prompt to the user, and that prompt might say, please enter your string, or please enter your integer. So if we want to do that, there is a syscall that will get us there. So we would load up register v0 with the value of 4 and then call a syscall. But we would also have to put in the address. We would have to load the address of the particular message going out to the console that we wish to write. And then syscall would proceed to send that information out to the console window. So if I go ahead and run this program, Let's go ahead and assemble this. And you can see that there's only three lines of code here. There are other things down below there, that, but I'm just going to look at the first three lines of code in the executable. And it's load the address of the prompt in, um, and then go ahead and load in the value of 4 into v0, and then do a syscall. So let's step through once. And I'm looking down here to see um, what comes up. So now the syscall gets executed here. And what you see is there's a prompt that says, enter your string. And then that's it. So that's all it does, it just simply prompts. It doesn't, you know, if you want to read in the string, then that's a different thing. So at this point, we can just simply write out to the console. And I'm calling this window down here at the very bottom, the run IO window, the console. Um, now, what other examples are out there as far as ways that we can interact with the operating system? So if I go to the help function here, and if I click on the tab called syscalls, what you can see is that um, there are a number of different syscalls that we can do. They're all stored inside of v0. If you want to simply print an integer, print a float, print a double, print a string, and so forth, read an integer, read a float, read a double, read a string. Um, if you want to dynamically allocate memory, um, similar to a malloc in C or a new 
as in ArrayList equals new ArrayList in Java or something like that. So these are the things that we can do. Open files, read from a file, write to a file. We can have noises, sounds, melodies, musical instruments come out, generate random integers. So there are a number of things that we can do. And notice that at the bottom of that list, there are some additional notes uh, uh, regarding certain service. Service 8, 11, 13, um, there's additional information there that you might find helpful, and then some other examples. Here, let's look at a couple of other examples. Um, let's say we wish to read a string from a user. Um, let's see what the instructions suggest. Apparently, if you just look at the code we have here, um, it says, we're loading the address, and then we're putting an integer value of 5 into A1, and then the syscall itself. So when you go to the help function um, and you look at reading a string, it says that in order to read a string, we need to also um, work with a couple of arguments. And these arguments for um, for syscall 8 is the address of the input buffer. That's going to be A0. And then A1 would be the maximum number of characters to read. So the address of the input buffer is input. The maximum number of characters to read here is 5. And then the syscall is a 5. So A1 is the maximum number of characters. So max number of characters, and then this one is, you know, address of input buffer. So what does that mean when we say that it's a, an input buffer? Well, what it means is that somewhere in our data segment, we have allocated um, space for input. So if I have, for example, allocated 60 bytes here, Right, then I'm calling that my input buffer. So the input buffer is nothing more but a space, something in memory where you can store information. So this one should read in a string from the user. So if I run this now and then put some information in and look at it, the address, I'm hoping to see um, the information that gets typed in. So as it stands right now, starting at zero and then the next four bytes and the next four, it looks empty, right? There's nothing there. So if I step, 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 and it says maximum number of characters is five, it's looking to do a service call at this point. And I can say, um, let's type in this, let's run that service call. And now it's a blinking prompt and um, this is and it stops right there so it only took in four and that's because we allocated in the maximum number of characters that we said we wanted to read was in fact five so if you notice that for input um, eight for function call or syscall um, or service 8, there's a note here that says see note below. And what it's going to tell you is that um, is that for a specified length, whatever that value n you put in, the string can be no longer than n minus 1. And that's because it's going to add a new line, um, or rather it's going to um, terminate that string. So that means that even though we said five, it only took in four. That was the T-H-I-S, and it didn't take any more than that. So if I want to maybe put in more information, let's put in a 10. And then let's see if we can run this again. And you'll see that it ends up being placed in the appropriate area of memory. So let's go ahead and step, 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 and then do our syscall. And... And now it's sitting here waiting for some additional input. Um, this, let's see if we can clear this. 
Okay, so we're here. And this, this is my, and then it stops right there. Now, all of that information, if I put this, show this in ASCII, you'll see that there's a T, H, I, S, space, I, S, space, M, and then the termination of that string. So it did take in how many characters? We said take in 10 characters. So I should be able to see that there are nine characters that were typed in. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine, if you include the space, um, the spaces that are there, 10 is for the terminating character of that string. So those are the uh, those are just a couple of examples of sysclause. You can print an integer, load up a value into a zero, and then a one into v zero, and you'll print out twenty twenty. If you want to print a string, you'll just simply load in the address of that string with la, and then use the uh, loaded four into v zero. If you want to read information, which we just did, you can do that, maximum number of characters to read. And then there are things you can do in the way of music, where you can control pitch, duration, interest, instrument, and volume by loading up the appropriate um, A, 0 through A3 register values, and then call syscall with 31. Um, and so those are the things that you can do with syscalls.